Hey y'all, welcome back. This is Trey over at TreyMixes.com. Um, coming back with another tonal construction video where we talk about uh, tone creation for producers. And we're going to look at my newest release that just came out, uh, which was an arrangement of the Legend of Zelda's uh, title theme from Ocarina of Time. And uh, because I've gotten some questions and comments about the clean tone at the end of this. And so since a lot of people have been asking more about clean tones than distorted tones, we'll talk about this one. So first things first, let's um, listen to the end of this section. So you're going to hear the lead sound that we're going to talk about, and then we'll talk about uh, what we did to arrive at that. That's one section, and another lick that people commented on was out here at the end of this section. So you have this this nice, smooth, round, clean tone. I'd play more, but I'm slightly concerned it might get hit with copyright restriction or something. So let's listen to it in solo real quick, just the start. Very thick, clean, jazzy strat sound. Now, the guitar has something to do with it. It's played through a strat in the neck pickup position, a uh, single coil. And uh, that has something to do with the sound because you need a single coil to get this sound. Um, but if we just turn off the amp, I'll even lean on the, leave on the extra compression and EQ. So there's your DI input. Um, so that is obviously not going to cut it just by having the guitar. So a uh, first things first is usually the picking of the amp. And um, I always like going with the matched cabinet in guitar rig. We're in guitar rig again. And uh, this twang reverb is a pretty standard, uh, exactly what you would expect, model on a Fender twin reverb amp. And it is a go-to standard for jazz and blues for decades and so that's what I went with immediately and just worked with my treble and mid and bass just to get it sounding the way I wanted it to sound so we've got we've got some more tone coming in on that but the the real good thing is the impulse response on this reverb cab sounds pretty good that sounds much more like an amp so we pull that in. I've got it set between the mics. This is a 421 simulation mic, and this is a 57 simulation mic. I like using both of them, but you can always use this slider back and forth if you want a thinner or fatter sound. So here, I'll show you. So 57s in the studio tend to be really bitey and have a lot of mid mids that it captures and the 421 gets a lot more uh, of a low end capture to it so I like using both of them and I don't usually put any put a lot of air in my amp sound and uh, you can use any impulse response if you have another impulse response loader that you would like to use to get a sound like this um, just showing you how I do it and the impulse responses are just basically cab sounds they're super fancy EQ curves that diminish a lot of top end to make it sound more like an acceptable amp so one more time, just to demonstrate that it does take off a lot of high end. So see, that it's really helpful to keep that DI from being biting. But um, we need more. We need more girth. We need more strength and fatness. And so putting a Tube Screamer in front is an age-old guitar secret. Uh, just to give you a bigger, better sound. So we'll just turn it on, and I have a lot of volume boost and a little bit of a tone control, but no drive, no distortion. Just use the drive of the pedal, and don't use the distortion. It's a season to taste, but that gives you a lot of the grit. Uh, that you're looking for. Next, let's do some EQ work. So I decided to boost in the, the presence area and a little bit more warmth. So 
So there's some more string sound. And then it's a good old delay and reverb. And I just love this psych delay. I think it has a lot of good delay sounds into it. It's set pretty fast on the time. It's more like a slap and uh, not a lot of repeats, but it adds a lot of width and uh, depth to the sound. And reverb, reverb does the trick. Very cool. Um, you ever, you know, you don't want to wash it out with too much reverb. And I have the pre-delay turned all the way down because I really wanted it to. Um, it's a very sparse arrangement, so I wasn't really worried about it not uh, the the transients of the guitar not showing through. So I didn't worry too much about that. But that is the basic setup of my little jazz blues sound on this song. Uh, for full transparency, there's a little bit additional compression going on and a little bit extra EQ work, but not much. Just pulling out a little mud and a uh, high pass filter. So you can really preserve some more pick attack with the compression and just getting rid of any extra junk with the EQ. So that's pretty much it. That's how I got my clean lead sound uh, for that newest release. We'll be talking about more tones here in the future. And thanks for hanging out. If you found this useful, like, subscribe, head to TreyMixes.com, please, and sign up to get your free mini course on mixing with saturation. Uh, it's super useful, and I guarantee you can make your mixes sound better this week. Uh, guaranteed. So go grab that freebie and subscribe. Help me out. Thanks a lot.